deciding what sculpture to make next. I used my Twitter account to ask what people wanted to see. Most of the replies that came back were requests for Groot. I went and saw Guardians of the Galaxy. It's a fun movie, and Groot is such a super cool character. He's made of wood, so it's just perfect. I started off with the Steel MS290, which has a stock chainsaw bar on it. It's 18 inches long. That was for removing the bulk of the material. For Groot, I used Eastern Red Cedar, which is what I usually work with when I'm at home in Texas. It smells amazing. It's harder to carve with knots, but since Groot is made out of wood, I thought that all the little whorls would make him a little more interesting to look at. At the top of Groot's head, there was a fold in the wood that was already there in the exact place it needed to be, so I wanted to try to preserve the texture there as much as possible because it has this sort of smooth, organic feeling that I wouldn't be able to get with a chainsaw. When I see something that I can incorporate into the design as if I planned it, which I never plan it, but sometimes I, I get lucky, um, I try to preserve some of those interesting details in the wood. And that's part of the fun of sculpting, is using material that is inspiring, letting the material inform the design a little bit. It's more of a conversation that way, and less of me just imposing my idea. I grew up in Oregon, in a valley, surrounded by fir trees, about 45 minutes away from the Oregon coast. On the coast, there were a lot of chainsaw carvers, so it's something I was exposed to, though I wouldn't have expected to end up doing this. My grandfather on my father's side was a logger, and he was also a poet, and he used his work as a source of inspiration. A lot of his poems had to do with the forest and working with trees. My grandfather on my mother's side worked at a mill, and in his spare time, he did small wood carvings with hand tools. When I was a kid, I told him I wanted to learn how to carve, and he let me have some of his knives, and he gave me a piece of wood, and he would give me a project, and I would plug away at it until I cut myself, and then I'd give up. I come from a very creative and resourceful family, so it doesn't surprise me that I have a creative career. I am a little surprised that I'm a chainsaw artist. I mean, how does that even happen? The biggest downside of Eastern Red Cedar is that it doesn't get very large here. And so if I am gonna work on a larger piece, I either need to get very lucky finding material or I have to composite it together. I knew immediately with Groot because the wood that I had was so narrow that I was going to have to add arms to him. I found a fairly narrow piece of cedar that originally was going to be the center pole for a tent I was making. I started carving out the arms to match the body. I used the angle grinder to smooth out the surface at the shoulder and on the top of the arm. The hands looked a little bit small, but I thought maybe if I could curl the fingers that it wouldn't be too noticeable. So I went ahead and carved both arms before realizing that, yeah, they were way too small. It was obvious, and I had to start over from scratch. You know, and I have this moment sometimes where I think that I can get away with something, and I've already started, so I might as well follow through, but then I waste all this time finishing and then realizing that my first gut reaction was correct, and then I should never have wasted time. One of my first jobs after high school was working at a Christmas tree farm near where I grew up. I would groom the trees so they grew in a cone shape. I used to tag them and work in the office. My whole life growing up, I was surrounded by trees. They filled the landscape. They provided work for me and my family. I love trees. For the skin texture and the chest plate area, which looks kind of like broken boards on its body, all of the textures that kind of make Groot look like Groot. I use the MS-150 with a tiny, tiny little chain. You don't really sculpt with that one, you really just draw details on with it. To create the shadows, I spray painted the entire piece with a dark brown spray paint called, I think it was called Espresso. After the spray paint dried, I used a combination of an orbital sander for like the big areas, and then a flap sander for places like the face. After he was sanded and his shadows were created by spray paint, I used a semi-transparent, neutral colored deck stain. Kind of gives a nice middle ground color and blends everything together. The final step was creating the moss effect on his neck, shoulders, and face and the top of his head. I've been developing my skills as an artist for years in a lot of different mediums. This feels like the purest form of creativity. It was something I was always curious about 
and something I wanted to try for years, but always had reasons not to. Mostly I was intimidated by using a chainsaw, so I never started. My first time, though, was such a power trip, not only to hold a chainsaw, but to take an idea that I had in my head and transform a raw log into it in just, you know, a half a day. I was always going against the grain in everything growing up. It's interesting to me that I still ended up sort of in the family business. Thanks for watching me make this Groot sculpture. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click on him to subscribe.